All right, now I think we're in business. Okay, so uh, that will lead me to a couple things. First of all, uh, I try to record just about every lesson. Um, in the process of going through things, and today might be an example, I might go really fast, I might lose you, you might just show up to class having a bad day, okay? You're having a bad day, you can't focus, you get done with the lesson and you realize, I don't remember a word he said. There should be a, uh, a video record of what we did in class uh, available on Schoology, so you can go back and rewatch the video. Early on, most people just wanna hear themselves speak on the video, so if you answer a question, you'll be on there and uh, get started, okay? Uh, we're gonna start with the question of the day. For that question of the day, I would like you to answer in chat, not out loud. And the first question is, would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? Go. Appears to be split 50-50. Beautiful. I'm going to talk while you're answering. We're going to do these a lot. Um, we'll do more of them out of Schoology as a discussion post. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is, number one, it's a good opener. But number two, it will also give me an opportunity to use that as attendance. So in the future, if I have a question of the day on Schoology, obviously you need to answer it, because if you didn't answer it, I'm assuming you weren't in class. Question number two, if you could uninvent one thing in the world so that it would no longer exist, what would you choose? COVID is not an answer. That's off the books. Nice try, I beat you to it. Mosquitoes is an excellent answer, Hannah. Ooh, microtransactions. A gamer. Sunburn, bugs, the appendix. The appendix in a book, Noah, or the appendix in your stomach? Or in your abdomen, I guess it's stomach. not. Stomach. Okay, thank you. Yeah, abdomen. Racism, good answer. Social media, excellent answer. Spiders, great answer. Rats, nice. Okay. Um, I purchased these two books and uh, they are filled with those types of questions. So like I said, we'll spend quite a bit of time, whoops, working or answering those types of questions. Okay, good. Uh, let's talk about Zoom. And I know that you've had this shoved down your throat. I know you're juniors and seniors, but you need to hear it from me so that we're all on the same page. This is really weird for everybody. It's, I think it's a little bit easier for my freshmen than it is for you guys, because you guys have already experienced a couple years of high school and you know what it's like. For them, they don't know any different. But uh, for me, I'm Mr. Reedy. Did I introduce myself yet? Okay, well, hi everybody, I'm Mr. Reedy. For those of you that have never had me for class or I've never had you in class, uh, my name is Mr. Reedy. A lot of people just call me Reedy. I don't care, whatever you want to call me, it's fine. Um, I mean, Reedy or Mr. Reedy, don't call me some other names, I'm sure. You can do that in your own time. Um, schedule and contact information. In a couple minutes, I'm going to bop over to Schoology and show you our Schoology page. I'm sure you've already been there, but there's a couple things that I want to talk about there. Um, we'll cover that in a second. Um, zero hour. So every day between 8.45 and 9.55, when you're probably still in bed, we have zero hour. That zero hour is designed to give me time to meet with my coworkers, to do planning. I'm also going to use it as an opportunity to help students. So at some point, you're going to have some questions. Zero hour is going to be a great way to get it done. I also have some free periods. If that works better for you, we can arrange that too. But the way I'm going to handle zero hours every day, probably starting next week, when I come in at zero hour at 8.45, I'm going to start my Zoom. And it's just going to sit open. If you have questions about homework or you need to look over some problems, just come and join the Zoom. 
for that zero hour and the link is on Schoology. I'll show you where that is when we get to it. If you are working on homework and you are completely stumped and you want to make sure that I'm going to be in Zoom, just shoot me a quick email. Hey, Mr. Reedy, I was really struggling on the lesson last night. Can I come in tomorrow for zero hour? However, contacting me ahead of time is not a requirement. You can just bop into zero hour. If you try to come into zero hour and it's not available, that means a couple things. Number one, I forgot. It might happen. Number two, I could be in meetings. Or number three, I have things going on that I can't come to zero hour. Okay, don't panic. We'll, we'll work it out. By now, you should know how email works. First, teacher's first name dot last name at d214.org. Uh, the graphic over here on the right is uh, a bunch of cute little pictures. I just learned how to use Bitmoji, by the way. I'm very proud of that. 55 years old and I can now do Bitmoji. Check it out. Um, but let's talk about some, some Zoom etiquette. I'm treating Zoom like my classroom. And so certain things are going to be uh, going to be true. Number one, no hats. Number two, take your hood off. Number three, I think I have these as clicky things. Get out of bed. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. You shouldn't still be in bed. You would be amazed, however, in the spring, at 1.30 in the afternoon, how many people I still had sitting in bed. So what you need to do, if you haven't already done so, is you need to find a spot that you can consider your learning station. And everybody's place is going to be different. Um, mine happens to be my classroom. I come into work every day, I'm working in my classroom, I've got this whole room to myself, 47 TVs, a smart board, everything else. For you, it might be a desk in your bedroom. It might be the kitchen table. It might be a desk you set up in the garage. On some nice days, it might be the backyard. Like today would be a great day to be outside if your Wi-Fi reaches there. But it's gotta be something where you can get work done. And I understand some of you may have 47 brothers and sisters that are all trying to remote learn. Some of you might be an only child in a 12 bedroom mansion. You gotta find some place to work and it's not your bed. Okay, questions about that? Beautiful, be on time. We all have lunch before this. There's no excuse for being late. I will try to open the Zoom early, like 10 minutes early. I probably won't admit people until one or two minutes before the period starts. If you don't want people to see your bedroom or your kitchen or your garage or whatever, put a background on, just make sure it's appropriate. I'm not gonna tell you what it needs to be, because I would love to see some individuality. But again, make sure it's appropriate. Most of you have probably done this already, but you'll notice if, for instance, I shut off my video, you see a graphic there. Uh, bonus question for today, does anybody happen to know what that is? Or where that came from? Five, four, three, Two, one. That is actually a logo that Elvis Presley used. TCB stands for taking care of business. And so that's what I've been doing for a couple months trying to get ready for this remote learning. Yours should be something with your picture on it. Many of you I know, many of you I don't know. And the struggle for me is going to be getting to know you, not only getting to put a name with a face, but also getting to know you as a person. And we're gonna spend quite a bit of time in class doing that, which is a little bit difficult in an AP class because we have content we need to cover, but I've come to the assumption, or the conclusion, I, I mean, that getting to know you is more important than doing a ton of math early on. That doesn't mean we're not gonna do a ton of math. We are gonna do a ton of math, but uh, I still wanna to get to know you before that, or while that's going on. As juniors and seniors, I don't think that getting your mute under control is any big deal. If you're not talking, mute. If you wanna talk, unmute and talk. It's pretty simple. Um, nothing else needs to be said there. Okay, study groups. This is a difficult course. I'm sure you've already heard how nasty it can be. At some point during the year, well, I could sugarcoat this for you, but I'm gonna be honest with you. At some point during the year, you're gonna have a breakdown. And sometimes that breakdown is having a crying fit. Sometimes it's swearing. Sometimes it's just checking out, whatever. I'm gonna push you really hard in this class. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I have to get you ready for this AP test. 
If I go easy on you, then you don't do well on the AP test. If I push you really hard, you do well on the AP test. Now, to compensate for how rough this is gonna get, I've managed to change the grading scale. So the grading scale for this class is 80, 70, 60, 50. Uh, for the parent Zoom that I had last week, I let your parents know that. If they weren't in the parent Zoom, or if they forgot, you might wanna remind them that of that, because if you're rocking an 82 in this class, you've got a really good A going, not a B. Now, this is the hardest part. I'm gonna ask you to do something that you're not gonna be able to do, but I'm gonna ask you anyways, and that is forget about your prospect grade. The only thing that matters between now and May is that AP test. I control your prospect grade. And when we get started early on, your prospect grade might not be where it is and you start to freak out about it. It doesn't matter. I make the ultimate decision about what grade you get in this class. What I can't control is the AP test. Okay? But again, you can't do that. But I'm telling you, you need to. I have a system in place that's gonna help you learn calculus. If you buy into the system, everything will work out and everything means your prospect grade and your AP score. If you don't buy into the system, you're gonna struggle. So, buy into the system. I had a lot of people that were rocking calc like a monster last year and then the quarantine hit and they quit and they paid for it. We're not gonna let that happen. All right, let me stop for a second and see, does anybody have any questions? If so, speak now or forever hold your peace. Again, if you have a question, I can only see a couple of you right now, so unmute and ask your question. Oh, I never answered the thing about study groups. Huh. In the process of getting beat up in this class, you're gonna need somebody to rely on or some people to rely on. I have found that people have the most success when they form some type of study group. Now that could be somebody that you work closely with on a daily basis. That could be a group of four people that get together and work on calculus. I had a group two years ago, I think, that they got together every Sunday night to, be, to do calculus. And when they got together on Sunday night, they set a timer and for the first 10 minutes, all they did is bitch about the class. I got no problem with that. That's cathartic, it gets it out of your system. If you wanna do that, do that, great. Whatever it takes to help keep you centered and on task and buying into the system. If you try to go about this alone, people succeed, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be a lot easier if you have people to rely on. Okay, does that make sense? All right, good. And that'll come with time. As you get to know more people in the class and you start to realize who in the class you can work with and who in the class you can't work with. Because sometimes friends don't make the best uh, work partners. Okay, They can't stay focused or whatever. So you, you might not want to work with a friend. You might want to work with a complete stranger who you think you might click with. And we'll cover that um, in the future. Okay, Let's talk about Schoology. All right, so over here. Come on. I've got our Schoology page. And uh, you will see a couple things there. Now, my Schoology page looks different than what you will see because I'm the teacher. Okay, so for instance, uh, first thing is the Zoom link. The Zoom link is there all the time. It will be there all year long. The Zoom never changes. So I'm assuming you all got here via Schoology. Uh, that's not gonna leave. The zero hour link is there. Again, I talked about zero hour already. I'm going to unlock the Calc textbook. Now, the reason I didn't unlock the Calc textbook is because I knew that some of you would download it. This is very important. When you download the Calc textbook, do not put it into Notability. You're gonna wanna put it in Notability, but it's too big, it'll crash Notability. Put it into Books, okay? Let me say that again. Put the textbook into Books, not into Notability. Okay, and I'll remind you of that later. Uh, the next thing down is our calendar. So I'm not gonna send you an assignment sheet um, because I have a Google Calendar set up for us. Now, this is my entire personal calendar, but at the top, 
is what you will see on the Google Calendar. So if I go back to Schoology, let's talk about Schoology. If you click on this, you get that. So there's our uh, calendar for the first two weeks. Okay. Now, this might not be very helpful for you. If you don't use Google Cal, that's okay. You don't have to. If you do, great. But what I find more helpful is if you click on that little button in the corner, it says agenda, and now it turns into a pseudo assignment sheet. Okay. And if you haven't been using it, I would also recommend that you use your Schoology calendar because as I start to create assignments to turn things in, they'll show up on your calendar. Okay. These are all the dates that they are assigned, not when they're due. Okay. Beautiful. Moving down the list, uh, Schedule Builder. I found this, one of the teachers at school created this. I'm offering it to you if you want to use it. I, I think it's pretty helpful. It's one document that you can put all your classes information on. So I'm sure you're probably using Schoology to get Zoom links and everything else. But if you want to organize yourself a little bit, um, I gave you this. You can use it. You don't have to use it. It's purely up to you. But it's pretty straightforward. I did the, the example for our class and I also filled in seventh period for you already. Okay. What class is it? Who's the teacher? Teacher's information. So you'll see my email address, the periods I'm free, the link to the zero hour, and then over on the right is the Zoom link for the class every day. Okay. So again, if you want to use it, you're more than welcome to. If you don't, that's okay too. Uh, and then the other stuff we'll get to is in chapter zero, which we will cover later on. You're actually gonna need this today, so let me publish that. Okay, uh, let me get back to my slideshow here and make sure that we got everything on Schoology. So, uh, talked about the Zoom links already, talked about the calendar assignment sheet, schedule builder, we did, assignments, good, good, homework answers, oh, I didn't point out. I'm giving you all the answers to the homework ahead of time. Okay, I don't care about the answers. I care about the work to get those answers. And uh, I don't know if anybody's told you yet, but do you know that this year Schoology and Infinite Campus are linked? So when I grade things in Schoology, they automatically show up in Infinite Campus. It might not affect you at all because you never notice the difference. For me, it's going to make my life a lot easier. All right. So... How are you going to take notes? Now, one thing you're noticing is you're, I'm assuming that many of you are sitting on your iPad. You might be on a laptop. You might, you might be doing a lot of different things. One of the things you're going to have to figure out is what works best for you. It's not my place to say to you how you should be doing this. However, I will give you a couple suggestions. Like for instance, some of you might right now be split screening. You might have Zoom on one half of the screen. You might have Notability on the other half of the screen taking notes. That wouldn't work for me, it's too small. It would drive me crazy. Um, others of you might have a laptop with Zoom on it and then you've got your iPad over on the side taking notes and notability. There's a lot of different ways to do things. If I were in this class, what I would do in remote learning is I would have my iPad for Zoom and I would take traditional notes in a spiral notebook. It's entirely up to you. Whatever works best for you. If you wanna do your homework in notability, that's fine. If you want to work in the digital environment, that's great. If you want to do traditional paper and pencil, that's okay. You can still turn it in. You'll just take a picture of it and send me pictures. Okay. After a couple days, we're going to have a group discussion and I want to hear what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis because the method that you're using might be an epiphany for somebody and like, oh yeah, I never thought of that. I could be doing it that way too. Right. So that'll come in the future. Uh, obviously, you need a calculator. TI-84, I would imagine that most of you have them already. If you don't, you need one ASAP. Textbook we talked about already. Remember, put it into books, not into notability. We talked about calendars and assignments and group and partner work. So one thing I did realize in the spring, especially in calculus, is that this large classroom environment doesn't really work that well. People don't want to talk. For me, I can only see 25 of you at a time, so I'm continually in Zoom, backing, jumping back and forth between the two screens. In this class, there's 30, 30 of you, plus my board, plus me, makes 32 on the screen, is a little too much. So we will do a ton of work in breakout sessions. 
In fact, we're going to do some work in breakout sessions today, but that's in the future. So you'll get used to that. Okay, let's spend some time talking about fixed and growth mindset. I know you've heard about this, especially if you've had me for class already. It uh, continues to be true, continues to be important. If you have never heard of this, please say me in the, um, just say me in Zoom. Three, two, one. Okay, so you all know what a fixed and versus growth mindset is. I'll review it quickly for you. Fixed mindset says something like, I can never learn this, this is too hard, why am I here? Growth mindset says, this is really difficult, but I think if I work hard, I can get there. It doesn't mean you will, but you at least convince yourself that you can get there. It's all based on brain research. Uh, it says that mistakes are encouraged. So some of you now are almost physically incapable of making a mistake. Like for instance, you cannot move on to the next problem unless you know if that answer is correct or not. And I might be talking about you, I might not be talking about you, but that happens. In this class in particular, you are going to make a lot of mistakes. The question is, what are you gonna do with those mistakes? Are you gonna lay, lay down and die or are you gonna learn something and move on? Communication is crucial. Now, what does that communication mean? That means learning how to talk to me, learning how to talk to each other, learning how to work in a group, not being afraid to ask questions. What's also very common in every classroom, not just calculus, but you think you're the only one that doesn't understand what's going on. And I guarantee when we get rolling, especially today, we're just gonna be doing some pre-calc and even algebra one stuff. You might've forgotten that. You're gonna think you're the only one that doesn't remember how to find a slope. I guarantee there's five or six other people in the room that forget how to find a slope. So don't be bashful about asking for clarification. Um, yeah, you can learn math at the highest level. You can do this class. You can, I can teach calculus to freshmen. I can teach calculus to eighth graders. They just have to understand and believe that they can do that. And then the big thing is, can you work with others? So education is the one environment that I can think of where you are required to work by yourself. If you look at any business, I challenge you to name a job where if you're working with a coworker, they're gonna say, hey, go do that by yourself. Education happens to be the exception to the rule. I don't subscribe to that. I think it's really helpful and positive for people to work with others. And so we're gonna talk a lot about what does it mean to work with others versus work near others versus work for others. Okay. Uh, working for others, we also know that is cheating. Working near others is a waste of everybody's time. And working with others is where you want to be. Okay. And some of you, when I put you in breakout sessions in a little while, you're gonna jump right into that and not have a problem. And in those breakout sessions, it'll be interesting to see or something to think about while you're in that breakout session. I'm in a breakout session or breakout room, am I working with others? Am I working near others? Or am I working for someone? Is somebody just copying my work? That's a little hard in a breakout room unless you wanna allow them to do that, but we'll get there. Okay, um, first part of your homework tonight. I'll unlock this later, it'll be on Schoology for you to download, but I'd like you to create an autobiography. And so you'll see a PDF that you're gonna drop into Notability. Um, the first page of the notability is this grid, which for some reason my grid didn't show up, but you're gonna answer a bunch of questions and you're gonna post a picture of yourself in there. Please make sure it's a picture of you. I don't want a picture of Michael Jordan or your dog. Picture of you. Now, if it, it's you with your family, you with your brother or sister, I have no problem with that, but somewhere in that picture, there's gotta be a picture of you, and then you answer those questions. This will allow me to get to know you. I've done mine already. I'll share my autobiography with you. And then we're gonna share those with everybody so that, again, we get to know each other so that it's not so weird when you end up with a group with somebody that you've never met before. You might remember, oh yeah, that person thinks that in 25 years they're gonna be running Amazon. Okay. I laugh at that, but you know, who knows? Okay, any questions so far? We're good? Okay, we're gonna take a two minute break. In that two minutes, I want you to go to Schoology and download the document called Breakout Examples in the Chapter Zero folder. Get that into Notability because we'll need it in a couple minutes. 
Go. Twenty seconds. And time. Let's move on. Okay, still, any questions you thought of? Anybody have trouble doing that? I'm assuming you're all good to go and getting a document out of Schoology into Notability. If not, we're going to have to spend some time going over that. We're not really. You should know how to do that. Uh, I'm going to wait till everybody's video is back so we can see. Gavin, Mitchell, Haley. The other thing I wanted to mention is um, some of you I know, some of you uh, I don't. I want to get to know your names. I want to get to know your correct names and the name you want to be called. So we'll do some work later in the week with some name things. I think a name is very important. You would be amazed at how many students go all year letting me mispronounce their name and there's no excuse for that. So even if I struggle to pronounce your name, that's my fault, not yours, and you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't feel uncomfortable. I also um, have been trying to be more gender neutral so I will still, out of habit, still say things like, okay guys, let's get started. I don't mean anything malicious by it. I'm trying to change, it is 2020. So um, if it happens, correct me, but understand where I'm coming from. Okay, we good? Beautiful, we're gonna do some math now. I'm just gonna go. At some point, we're gonna take a break and then we're gonna finish up. And I might run out of time. I might finish the, finish the slideshow, but uh, we are done here at 2.10. So as we get close to 210, we'll, we'll deal with that. Most of this, as I said, is Algebra 1 and pre, a little bit of pre-calculus, but for the most part, it's Algebra 1. So I'm going to go very fast. If I go too fast, say something. If you have a question, say something. So you'll notice right now I'm looking at my computer. If I turn to look at my board, I'm not looking at my computer. So if you raise your hand, I can't see you. If you're on the second screen, I can't see you. So open your mouth and talk. Are we clear? See you're shaking your heads. I can't see that. Open your mouth. Can you, are we clear? Yes. I knew I'd get you with that one. Yeah. Okay, good, yes. good, 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 good. All right, let's go. Uh, can you sketch a graph of an equation? Can you find the intercepts of that equation? Can you test a graph for symmetry? Can you juggle? How many people can juggle? Say yes. Definitely nope. not. Nobody can juggle? Okay, now I've got an activity for next week. We're going to learn how to juggle. That'll be awesome. I mean, we're going to start slow, like, you know, like tennis balls, but not, we'll work up to chainsaws. Okay. That's our goal by, by winter break is juggling chainsaws. Okay, simple equation. What can you tell me about that equation?
Is it in standard form? Ooh, very nice. Standard form. The most hated of all forms. Yes. What this, else? The slope is negative three. Ooh, getting fancy. Yeah, keep going. What else? What's it? Seven. Good. What's it look like? Downward line. It's a line. Good. How do we know it's a line? Other than your vast years of mathematical experience. Nobody? Going once, going twice? Uh, the phone and sideways. Jacob. Hello. Jacob. Lose your hood. Lose your hood. Atta boy. Now tilt your camera down so I can see your bright shining face. Nice, there we go. Okay, so that's a line. It's in a weird form. Nobody cares about it. Is the point two one on that line? Yes. Why? Or how do you know? If you plug them in, it equals seven. Awesome. Two times, uh, two times three is six plus one is seven. Outstanding. Jacob, last time, lose the hood all the way down. Good. Thank you. Um, somebody give me a point that's not on the line. This should be easy. Three, four. Three, four. Uh, three times three is nine plus four is 11. It's not equal to seven. Very good. How many points are on the graph? Infinitely many. Infinitely many. How many points are not on the graph? infinitely many which one's bigger sorry which one's bigger on the graph or not on the graph no not no. Huh? it's actually the same infinity is infinity okay we'll get to that later uh and i'm assuming you could all graph this equation it's a line okay how would you graph it Go to the, the y-intercept at seven and then go down three over one. Love it. What else? Uh, oh, you're gonna ask your one. Go again. Plug in x variables and see what the y comes out as. Good. Anything else? Okay, the ones I had were convert to slope intercept, which is pretty much what we said already. Make a t-chart, plug in a bunch of points, see what you get. And then you could cheat and use your calculator. It's fine. Strangely enough, though, if you have to put it in your calculator, you got to solve for y anyways, which would put it in slope intercept form. But you get the idea. In case you're wondering, that's what it looks like. Okay, this is algebra one stuff. I'm going to start going faster because we spent way too much time on this. Okay. How to find the x and y intercepts of a graph. Okay, where does it cross the x-axis? Where does it cross the y-axis? Plug zero in for y to find the y-intercept. Plug zero in for x to find the x-intercept. Okay. You'll notice in big red letters it says a breakout room. You're going to go to your breakout rooms. I'm going to put you in some random breakout rooms with people you might not know. That's very scary. And you're going to solve problems one and two on that breakout example worksheet. Any questions before I send you on your merry way? I'm assuming you've all done this before, right? Outstanding. Okay, let's see. 30 divided by 4 is 7, so I think we're going to try 8 groups here. I think we're going to try 8 groups here if I can get it to work. Where are my breakout rooms? Hold on. Technical difficulties, kids. Oh, there it is. It was hidden. Uh, let's go automatic 8 rooms. Have fun. Bye-bye.
I think everybody's back. Let's see. Okay, so it's safe to assume that um, you all saw my messages while you're in your breakout rooms, yes? And for those of you that haven't used breakout rooms before, you should also know, as I mentioned in my message to you all, that if you're in a breakout room and you need me, you can page me and I can come in and join your breakout room. It's also not unusual for me in the, in the process of day-to-day -day, uh, work, just showing up in a breakout room. Okay, so you hear a ding and I'll join your group. And, uh, and if you have a question, you would do the same thing. Okay, any problems? All right, well, let's take a look at the first one and see how you did. Um, Somebody tell me what to do. How do I find the X and Y intercepts? For the X intercept, you can put the Y at zero and solve. Okay, tell me how to solve that. Um, you can take the greatest common factor of X out. And then it's the difference of squares. So it's X plus two. 
Well done. Now notice we didn't divide by x. Okay. So one rule that is always true is never ever divide by a variable unless you're 100% sure that it can't be 0. And in this case, it can be 0 because x turns out to be 0, negative 2, and 2. Okay. There is another way to solve this, but I'm going to skip that for when we come down to problem number 2. All right, so before we start diving into problem number two, what can you tell me about that equation? It's an equation of a circle. Good. Where's the center? Three, four. Good. What's the radius? Two. Two. Perfect. So I can dive into this mathematically and start solving it. However, if we think a little bit about this, I have a circle with a center at three, four and the radius of two. Does that tell you anything? It won't reach the intercepts. Beautiful. So right away I know, just from doing a little bit of thinking, saving myself some hassles, I get that it has no intercepts. However, let's suppose you didn't realize that, and I need to solve this. Let's start by plugging 0 in for x. If I plug 0 in for x, I get negative 3 quantity uh, squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 4. Uh, that's 9, that's y minus 4 quantity squared equals negative 5. Now, from this point on, you could multiply that out and get a, a quadratic and then move the 5 to the other side and solve the quadratic. However, I would take the square root of both sides. Whoops, get that out of there, square root of that. What's wrong with that? Can't take the square root of a negative. Right. So now all of a sudden we've nullified the problem, which indicates exactly what we already knew, that there is no intercept. And the same thing would happen if you plug zero in for y. That's also, ever, go ahead. Sorry, should we ever solve that out to uh, i? No, that's a great thing about this course. We're done with that i business. We only deal with real numbers in this class. So two rules, that, uh, the second rule that will always apply, no negative square roots. Okay, I don't want any square root of 5i garbage. It makes my head hurt. Okay, we don't have to worry about it. That's a, when did you do that? Advanced algebra? Awkward pause. Okay, who cares? All right. Any questions on these two problems? Pretty straightforward? Good. The reason I included this problem is, uh, the second problem is because it gives you an indication of sneaky ways to solve problems. And one of the things that the College Board really likes in Calc is they like to throw different opportunities at you with different possible ways to solve the problems. Okay, So there's nothing wrong with taking that problem and grinding out the whole problem and finding out that there's no answers. However, you can also solve it by um, by being a little sneaky and realizing that the circle won't hit any of the axes. Okay, we did that one already. We solved the problems, great, everybody's happy. There's all the work in case you wanna see it. It matches the answers we had, fantastic. It's a cubic. And so if you're a, if you're a visual learner and you like pictures, there's a picture of what it looks like. Um, zero, zero ser solves as, as, serves as both an x-intercept and a y-intercept and then we got our other answers. Circle, like we said, we already know the solutions to that. Okay, symmetry. First of all, uh, yx is symmetry. So if you were to take a samurai sword and slice you from head down to toe, you would be, for the most part, y-axis symmetric. You've got an arm on the right side, you've got an arm on the left side. Now, I understand that there's a pancreas on one side and a appendix on the other, but for the most part, two arms, two legs, two eyes, ears, you are y-axis symmetric, okay? From a graphing standpoint, it's the same thing. Can you fold that graph over the y-axis and get the same thing? Now, there's a couple different ways to approach this. One way is to look at the picture. If I showed you this picture, you should be able to tell, yeah, that's y-axis symmetric. It's the same on the right as it is on the left. The other thing, and what one thing that they like, they being the College Board likes a lot, is for you to test that algebraically. So to test that algebraically, you have to plug in a negative x, Simplify that whole mess and make sure you end up where you started. 
If you do that, you have something that's called y-axis symmetric. It's also known as an even function. Okay, but now we're going to cheat. So here's your cheat. The cheat is I would like to know the answer before I get started. So I know that if I have an even function, then it has to be y-axis symmetric, and I can do this whole algebra thing and get the results I'm looking for. So for instance, if I have this parabola, x squared minus 3, y equals x squared minus 3, it is going to be y-axis symmetric because all of the exponents uh, are even. Okay. The exponent on the x obviously is squared, 2, that's even. The exponent on the 3, wait a second, what's the exponent on the 3? 1. No. I mean, where's, where's the x for the 3? There is zero. Very good. This is actually, that's actually 3x to the zero power. But who's going to write that over and over again? Now, the reason I mention that, that seems kind of silly, but that still fits the rule then that it's an even function. Okay. Two is even, zero is even, we're good to go. Y axis symmetric. Questions? Good. Could you? Sure. Sorry, could you repeat the. Um the 3x0 portion that you just said? Yeah, 3 is the same thing. Uh, okay, so here, I'll show you graphically. For those of you that are visual learners, x, for instance, is the same thing as 1x to the first. But we realize that it's a waste of time to write the 1 and to write, write the two 1s, the 1 in front, the coefficient, and the exponent. So we just turn that into x. The same thing is true over here. This is the same thing as x to the 0, but x to the 0 is just 1. So we don't bother writing that x to the 0 over and over again. OK, does that help? Yeah. That, that's never going to come up except in this particular instance when we're look, wondering whether or not it's an even function. Coefficients and constants, sorry, not coefficients, constants are considered even. OK, all right. You are not x-axis symmetric. If I take that same samurai sword and I slice you across the waist, the top doesn't match the bottom. You've got legs below, you've got a torso up above. If you want to check it algebraically, you put a negative y in for y and see if you get the same answer. We good? Okay, x equals y squared. Simple function. Why is that bad? Why do we not like that? Why is this going to be about the only time we ever mention it? It's not a function. Beautiful. It's not a function. So it does have symmetry about the x-axis, but we're not going to talk about it because we're dealing all with functions in this class. However, what we will be talking about is a symmetry with respect to the origin, okay. also known as an odd function. Now, how can you tell graphically if it's an odd function? You take the picture, you turn it upside down. If it looks the same way right side up as upside down, and most of the time you'll do that with your calculator, by the way. I can't really spin the board upside down. If they match, then it's an odd function. We can also cheat. How do we know if it's an odd function? All the exponents are odd. <clears throat> Excuse me, and how do we test it algebraically? You gotta plug both negative x and negative y into the function. Okay, so for instance, x equals y cubed. Odd, odd, good to go. Uh, one quick thing before I forget, let me go back to this guy. As I said, we're not going to deal with that a lot, but what we will deal with is that. How do those two things differ? They seem to be the same thing, aren't they? Take the square root of both sides, we're golden. How are they different? There can't be any negative side of it. So? Right, like the bottom half wouldn't be there? There you go, there it is. This bottom half wouldn't be there for this guy. And if that bottom half's not there, it's a function and we're happy. 
the square root function versus this weird sideways parabola. Okay, so uh, in an effort to save time, I'd I'm gonna send you to some new breakout rooms. You might end up with complete different people. You might end up with the same people. It's random. And what I'd like you to do is uh, problem number two, test problem number one to see what kind of symmetry it has. Questions? All right, I'm gonna only give you about two minutes in there because we got stuff to do still. Give me one second. Still trying to figure this out. All right, go. Two minutes. Knock yourselves out. Alex, go away. I don't want to see you anymore. Is Get this out. working for me, Mr. Reedy? Get out of here. You should have a button to click on join. It's not, oh, now it came up. Oh yeah, now it came up. My Wi-Fi's been going crazy all morning. I understand. Ava, right. where are you? Bye. Bye, miss you. Okay, uh, I'm gonna keep rolling. I know that was super quick, but I realized that it's, uh, we only have 12 minutes left, so I gotta keep rolling along. If you were paying attention earlier, you would have seen this graph, and that graph tells you that it has what kind of symmetry? Hmm? Isn't it symmetrical to the origin? Correct, it's origin axis symmetric. Okay, which means to test that, you would put in negative y, put in negative x, and simplify. So if I simplify that, I get negative x cubed plus 4x. Solve for y by multiplying everything by negative 1. I get this. This matches this, so therefore... It has origin symmetry and life is grand. Okay, beautiful, moving on. Where were we? Uh, symmetry we talked about, I gotta go there, I gotta do that, an example. Okay, points of intersection. Is it safe to assume that you could find the points of intersection between a parabola and a line? Yes. How many could you find? Two. Or? At most two, one or zero. One, oh. zero, or two. Could you find three? No. You sure? 
Yes. Okay, just checking. How about if I change that parabola to a cubic? How many could you get? Three. Up to three. Oh, no, you can get more than that. Things get crazy. Things get crazy a little bit. But anyways, um, we're not going to spend a lot of time doing this because you did this ad nauseum in other classes. But how are you going to do it? Well, you could set them both equal to Y and solve. You could solve one of them for X or Y and plug it into the other. Doesn't matter. Okay. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. Okay? Is it okay for me to skip this? All right, I got a couple of thumbs up, so I'm moving on. Mother functions. The basic functions you should know. Linear. If you don't, drop the class. Quadratic. Cubics. Absolute value. That's the V looking thing. Semicircles. This you might not know. Have you worked with semicircles before? Okay, let's talk about that. X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared is the general equation for a circle. If I solve that for y, I get y is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. This is the generic form. Actually, I would get plus or minus. This is the generic form for a semicircle. The positive part is the top half. The negative part is the bottom half. Put it together, you get a circle. If I solve that for x, I'll get the left and the right semicircles. We don't work with that because still not a function. Icky bad. Exponential, extremely important. Anybody want to guess why exponential functions are extremely important right now? Ooh, the spread of disease usually follows an exponential growth. You get COVID, you give COVID to two friends, they give it to two friends etc. It's also how the walking dead happened. One zombie bites two people, those two zombies bite two people. Next thing you know we've got a hit show on AMC. Square root function we talked about already, that top half of that sideways parabola. There are others which we will get to. For instance, I'm pretty sure you've never seen that before, but that's one we'll deal with a lot. I don't know if you've done this guy before. Greatest integer function? Okay, we'll cover those. What we're gonna do with the mother function is obviously be able to, to graph and work with a basic function, but we also wanna be able to shift those mother functions around. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And those are called translations. So if I wanna take the x squared function and move it down, if I wanna take the x squared function, move it to the left or to the right, uh, you've done that a bit. We'll review that in the future. Okay. Very quickly, slope. If you can't find slope, again, drop the class. Um, equations of lines. I know, even as juniors and seniors, some of you absolutely love slope-intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. I'm going to do everything in y equals mx plus b. My job is going to be to convince you to give that up. Just say no and get you to switch to slope intercept. Sorry, I said the wrong thing, to point slope form. If you're already using point slope, great. If you're not, I'm gonna to try to convince you that this is a better way to go. And that's gonna be a slow, gradual process. But it's a lot easier to work with. You need a point, you need a slope. Oh wait, you really like slope intercept form? Well then put it in point slope and convert it. Very seldomly, if ever, is somebody gonna to say to you, give the answer of the equation of a line in this form. I don't care what form it's in. If you just won't give it up and you wanna stay with slope-intercept form, then stay with slope-intercept form. I can work with either. Actually, if you wanna work with general form, you can too. It's just really weird and we'd make fun of you. Ratio and rates of change. So, this class has only three topics. Limits, which will start next week. Derivatives, which we'll spend probably until November or December doing. Integrals, which we'll do all spring. That's it. Rate of change is a major component of um, the derivative part of that part of calculus. Okay, so I want to talk quickly about the difference between a ratio and a rate of change. And I know you can all read, so I'm not going to insult you. But rates, the units, the units cancel. Okay, feet over feet goes away. Rate of change, different units. 
people per day. 14,000 people were infected over the past week, seven days. Therefore, they have 2,000 infections per day. That's a rate of change. Most of the work we do is with rate of change, not with rates. We're gonna skip this because I'm hoping that you can all graph lines. But just for giggles, what does B look like? Horizontal line. Horizontal? Yes. You sure? Yes. Could I convince you otherwise? No. No, you're right, it's horizontal. Good. Common mistake, people get Y equals two and X equals two confused. Y equals is a horizontal line. Everything else I assume you're safe. If we had all the time in the world, which we don't, we would talk about, uh, we go back to breakout rooms and graph some lines. Parallel and perpendicular, I'm sure you remember this. Slopes are the same, they're parallel. Opposite reciprocals, also known as floppocets, they're perpendicular. If it's neither one of those, they just intersect. Okay, we're done, Woohoo! Now, one of the things uh, you neglected to remind me to talk about was phones. I realize that you're at home in your bedroom or on your kitchen table or in your garage or wherever you are. I cannot control what you do with your phone. However, if you're going to learn at the best possible scenario, you need to put your phone away. Okay. My phone is across the room, face down. I have no idea how many text messages I got. Probably a lot because I'm pretty cool. But you don't need to be posting to TikTok in calculus. Nobody wants to see a calculus Zoom TikTok and nobody cares how many Instagram followers you have. Put your phone away for at least 70 minutes a day. Now, some of you are gonna ignore me and we start to get an idea of what's going on. Like if you're always looking down at your lap, something weird is going on. If you just randomly burst into laughter, something weird is going on. But again, I can't police that. I'm just telling you that if you want to do well, you're gonna have to Put that phone away. Okay? Beautiful. Questions so far? We got two more minutes. Um, in those two minutes, let me tell you what you got for today's Tuesday, for Thursday. So for Thursday, I would like you to change your Zoom picture into something with your face on it so I don't see capital letters all the time. Number two, if you haven't already done so, change your Schoology picture. By the way, that Schoology picture, if you've never changed it, you cannot do it in the app. You have to go to a browser. So go to Safari or some browser, log into Schoology, change it that way. Same thing, face. After a while, after I learn everybody's name and you want to change it to something different, I don't care. Number two is that autobiography that I will post on Schoology soon. Okay? Number three, day one homework, which is on the calendar. Okay, that will cover this algebra stuff that we just talked about.